Hello, my beautiful friends. I hope you had a very, very happy Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, uh, whatever you celebrate, Yule, winter solstice. I hope all of those um, events were magical and amazing for you. My computer died, absolutely died. And it turned out, despite all of the theories I had in my head, which mostly were conspiracy theories, um, it turned out that my alt button was stuck. There was like dirt under it. And so like nothing would work. So I wasn't able to make any videos because all the things that I use to do the advent calendar and everything were on my, my laptop, not on my phone. So I could make shorts on my phone, but I couldn't do videos. So I missed out on wishing you all kinds of hope and light and love. But I know that if you've been with the channel, you know that I was sending all that to you, whether my computer worked or not. But I'm back because my alt button isn't stuck anymore. Hallelujah. So as we get ready for the new year, uh, Hogmanay, which is a huge festival in Scotland, um, we're getting ready for that time of the year for that celebration. And, um, it, and it, it's a little uncanny to think that um, up until the 1960s, late 50s, early 60s, Scotland did not celebrate Christmas because they weren't allowed to. So uh, celebrating Christmas in the way that we do today was outlawed uh, with the Reformation. And so all of the festivities and the, and the holiday was pushed to the new year, which is called Hogmanay. So now people celebrate Christmas and Hogmanay, but Hogmanay is a bigger party than, uh, than New Year's even in New York and, uh, and a little bit bigger than even Christmas in some places. So um, I have friends who, um, who uh, a friend of mine who was born in Canada, his father was Scottish. He never celebrated Christmas in um, in Scotland when he was growing up. So just interesting, but that isn't what we're going to talk about today. So, um, you know, I'm not a big believer in making New Year's resolutions because I feel like um, we have these lofty goals and, you know, like losing weight and quitting smoking or quitting cursing or whatever it is we decide we're going to do on January 1st and then we're great for a day and then out the window it goes. So I think it's better to take something that you've been working toward and building toward and trying to make it better. So my, my, new, my new Year's commitment, which is not a resolution, a commitment is to continue down the path of using AI for good and, and trying to change the world um, in positive ways with the amazing technology that we have at our fingertips. It's easy to be really afraid of this technology uh, because it's coming at us so quickly and because it, it um, feels like there's a huge learning curve, but there really um, there is less of a learning curve than learning things years ago. When I first started teaching with technology, I did so because I was using commercial grade video games to teach literature. So titles that you recognize, Grand Theft Auto, Fallout, um, the Unity uh, series, um, Assassin's Creed, things like that. So um, I had to learn to code and I had to learn, uh, I had to learn C++ and then I, I for whatever reason, computer, computer languages, unlike actual languages, come pretty easy to me. Uh, but now, you know, you can write in Python and not even know how to code in Python because, you know, these agents and our AI tools will do it for you. Uh, but back in the day, you had to learn that by hand. So, um, I think that uh, the, the technology that we have at our fingertips um, can do tremendous good in the world. And if we have more examples of good, then there'll be um, you know more light and love in the world. So the tool we're going to look at today is uh, probably one of my favorite tools. I would say that Notebook LM ranks up there with uh, Prompt Tester, which is one another one of my favorite tools. Um, but Google uh, has really done an amazing job sort of coordinating all of their tools and 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 really working on the functionality of each tool and notebook just came out with some updates that I think are pretty transformational and can really help um, with aiding good in the world so uh, if you have a Google account you can follow along you can uh, click in the comments below the transcript will be there with timestamps and you can go to each specific place uh, to get uh, assistance so follow along. Here we go. So I want to create a new notebook and um, I'm going to think about an issue that I care very much about. So I uh, do a lot of volunteer work for uh, disaster recovery for the American Red Cross and I volunteer uh, internationally for the International Red Cross Red Crescent uh, for humanitarian law and um, 
all sorts of things. So I, I pretty much do everything for the Red Cross. I give blood, but I don't uh, handle any of the blood, you know, the blood draws or anything like that. That's probably the one piece of the Red Cross that other than giving blood, I don't I don't do. But anything that's disaster related, I have all the trainings to deploy. I deployed over break. Um, I went out to a fire on Christmas Day. I worked the night before or Christmas Eve into Christmas Day as duty officer. And there was one fire in Pennsylvania of uh, you know a family with small children so we get them help right so so i i'm very passionate about about humanitarian work and um and and volunteering so i love the work that i do with the red cross um but it always makes me think especially on you know on the on christmas and when it's really cold out right now we have ice where i live you know about homelessness right and and who are the homeless people in our community and how can we help them so in Google Notebook, with some of the advances they've come up with, you can ask, um, you can add sources by clicking on this button here, right? You can add files that you have. You can look for websites you, if you have um, Google Drive or if, you, if, if you've copied some, some you know, text somewhere, you can put it in there. You can, um, you can check the web for new resources, fast research or just the web here um, or fast research here right you can do that so i'm going to click deep research because i want to get some numbers around um, the homelessness in where i live so i would like to know what the homeless population has been for carbon county pennsylvania which is where i live for the past 10 years and what has been done to help aid the homeless. What efforts could we or should we try that have not yet been tried? All right, so I'm gonna let that cook for a minute. And you can see that Google has, um, that Notebook has updated some things over here. And sort of my favorite new tool is this data tool, right? So you'll see in a minute, we're going to have it extract some data. All right, so it, it came up with, uh, it came up with seven more sources. All right, so here are all the sources that it sees. Okay, we're going to import them all. I have no idea if they're good or bad sources, right? I've not vetted any of this information. That will be step two after I ask my questions, right? I'm going to save this to a note just so that I have it. I'm going to title my notebook, uh, Carbon County Homelessness. You know, because people become homeless for so many reasons. And in the work that I do with the Red Cross, um, you know, we provide a little bit of money to get people through the first few days, but um, it isn't enough to sustain somebody or a family for a long period of time. So you hope that they find a, a place to go. Uh, but I have been in instances where there was no place to go because I live in a rural area. There aren't hotels where I'm at. Um, so, you know, sometimes you, you give them a blanket and you hope for the best and you hope somebody will take them in. But if not, you know, they are homeless. They've been displaced by fire and uh, we don't have a lot of resources, um, you know, not as many as maybe a big city you know, to help people. So, um, so I'm, I, you know, people become homeless for so many reasons. So, um, so we have this information. Now I'm going to ask it to make a data table from this information. So I'm going to click on here. Now, if I just click it, it'll create its own, it'll generate its own table, but I can also edit it and ask it very specific things. Um, this is what it it suggests create a table with the major findings in these research papers using columns, title, author, key result, extract the most important quotes from my readings, grouping them by topic and author, you know, list vacation. So these are things you can try. So I really like um, this, um, this, you know, create major findings. I create a table with major findings, listing the agency that assisted what efforts were done, the impact of the efforts, and any costs associated with the efforts, and who paid 
the costs. All right, so we're going to generate that. That'll generate a second one. Let me move myself out of the way so you can see. Now it's creating a second table. So it, um, it created a table here, and it cre it's creating a table there. Let's take a look at the table that it created. Let me move myself out of the way. So it gives you the organization. Carbon County Action Committee for Human Services. Uh, service category, the assistance that was provided, the location, key statistics, requirements of eligibility, and then the source. And the source comes from one of these things over here. So that is really good. And I can take this, I can rate it, I can say it's good or bad. I have to move myself out of the way. Let me move myself over here. Right, I can um, delete it, right? And I can export this directly to Sheets. Right, so now I have it as a table, you know, in in my uh, Google Drive. So now I'm going to look at the custom one that I built, right, which gave it the titles that I wanted. And now my job is going to be to make sure that this information is correct, right? I can export this to Sheets, just like I did before. Okay. So now that's in there. Now, one thing that I can do is, uh, let me move myself again, <laughs> moving myself around. I can add a source and I can add those two files back in. So I'm going to just go to my drive. I'm going to pick these two and I'm going to insert them. So now that this data now is included over here with the other things. Now you'll see there's a red one here. That means that it, it this is a dead link. So I'm just going to remove that source. Okay, and now I can ask a question and it'll ask a question and it'll include the data that I've I've summarized in my charts. So now it's answering questions based on my research. Right, so that's interesting. So um, the other thing that you can do is you can have, uh, you can create an infographic based on this information. So asking a good question, having something that you want to think about and think about homelessness and the issue in Carbon County where I live, Google does all of the legwork for you so you don't have to spend all that time now my job becomes going through and making sure that this information is accurate and that's the big step and that's the step that will always at least right now require humans when people are afraid that ai is going to take over a job this is where a human um, capacity comes in because i have to go through now and make sure that this infographic that gets created that a report that i might um you know i might you know ask it to create a report you know, um, I'm going to have it create a briefing doc, right? I have to then go through and make sure that this information is accurate because AI does hallucinate. So AI has to give you an answer. That's the way that the algorithm works. It has to make a prediction. So um, if it can't get enough data or it can't see enough data or the data is confusing to it, it will make things up. And that's what a hallucination is. So my job now will be to go through and vet this. And then the third step is I have to decide how to use this. Okay, I, I have this information. I vetted it. All the information is now correct. What do I do with it? Do I create something for the homeless? Do I go out and work with these agencies that have done things already and help them uh, show them how to use the data so that they can use their, their dollars, their donor dollars more effectively? What would be the best way to share this information um, so that we can uh, curb the problem of homelessness or at least aid the homeless in, in getting shelter or getting resources to them, right? What, what is the right solution? So you kind of have to know in the beginning what, what does the end game look like? like what do you want to happen at the end is it just gathering information so that okay well now i know here's the problem right or do you want to do something with that information do you want to you know create a homeless clinic do you want to uh you know get more federal or state or local dollars to the existing agencies that are, are already doing good work right what you know, what is your end game? What do you want to do with this information once you have it? So I hope that this was helpful to you. Let's just take a look at the infographic it created. Let me move myself out of the way. 
right? So I will uh, check this against the data that it gave, but this is a beautiful slide that I could use in a presentation. And, um, and it's and it's done a great job and this work back in i mean i've been around i've been around a long time so this i would have done this kind of work myself by hand um to do you know when i was in my previous position in new jersey and i was working with girls who code i would do a lot of presentations trying to get more people interested in supporting girls in coding you know and so i would have to like hand pull all the information create these kinds of graphics myself put them in a presentation myself right so Google has made things so much easier. So this is a great tool that can be used for good. What are you passionate about? How do you want to change the world in 2026 to be an amazing, bright, and shiny place to live? I am wishing you all the very best and brightest, and I will hopefully, uh, my alt button won't stick, and I will see you before Hogmanay. Be well. Take care. Bye-bye.